Hi, in our last video we discussed about deadweight loss and how the imposition of taxes lead to deadweight loss. Today we will discuss two more examples of how externalities lead to deadweight loss. So the two examples we will consider are price flow and price ceiling. We will see how does the price flow and price ceiling leads to deadweight loss. So basically what is price flow? Price flow refers to minimum price that the producer must charge and the consumer must pay. On the other hand, price ceiling refers to the maximum price that the producer can charge and the consumer would have to pay. So we will begin with price flow. So in our first example, as we can see on the left hand side panel uh, in the diagram, we have our x axis that represent quantities, we have our y axis that represent prices, this is our supply curve and this is our demand curve. Point A, that is the intersection of supply and demand curve, represents the equilibrium condition. Q0 and P0 are the equilibrium quantities and prices. This equilibrium A is basically the equilibrium when there is no externality. So in this case, what is the consumer surplus and what is the producer surplus? Let's see. We know that the consumer surplus is the area below the demand curve and above the equilibrium price line. So we can easily figure out that this triangle of A, P1, P0 is our consumer surplus. Similarly, our uh, producer surplus is the area above the supply curve and below our equilibrium price line. That is, we can see the triangle A, P0 and P2R is our producer surplus. And we know our total surplus is the summation of consumer surplus plus producer surplus. That is our bigger triangle, triangle A, P1, P2. That is this entire area is our total surplus. Now let's see on the right hand side panel where we would include our externality of price flow. Uh, again, similarly, this is our demand curve, this is our supply curve, x-axis is in quantity, y-axis is in price and A is our equilibrium condition where our quantity Q0 and price P0 are the quantities and prices in case where there is no externality. Now let's see, if our price, that is the minimum price that we charge or that is fixed is exactly at the equilibrium price when we can easily make out that our equilibrium will be again at price P0 and quantity Q0. If our price flow is below our equilibrium prices, then again intersection of the demand and supply curve would lead to our equilibrium condition at point A. But what happens when our minimum price is above P0, that is somewhere between P0 and P1. In that case, we know that since our minimum price is somewhere we can say it as P3, then in this case our equilibrium cannot reach at A. So now we need to see that does it lead to deadweight loss? It, yes, it leads to deadweight loss. Now we will see how. Let us assume that the minimum price needs to be here, that is above P0. Let's represent it by P3. We know that when our um, uh, at this price P3, the demand curve gives a quantity of Q1. On the other hand, the supply curve gives a quantity of Q2. In this case, we know this is a case of excess supply. But since the demand is less than supply, and the price cannot be reduced, therefore our equilibrium will reach at point B that will represent a quantity of Q1 and a price of P3. So in this case, we can see that our consumer surplus will again be the area below our demand curve and above our price line that is P3. So in this case, again in the right hand side panel, our yellow shaded triangle is our consumer surplus. Now we know that the producer surplus is the area above supply curve and below price line P3. So in this case our producer surplus will be area between P3, P2, C and B. Therefore this trapezium is our area of producer surplus. That is P3, B, C, P2. 
now we know that our total surplus is equal to consumer surplus plus producer surplus which is equivalent to p1 b c and p2 now comparing our total surplus in left hand side panel and right hand side panel we can easily figure out that this triangle of a b c is our dead weight loss because our total surplus without any externality is greater than our total surplus with externality therefore we can easily figure out triangle abc is our dead weight loss that is the purple shaded triangular region is our dead weight loss that is the loss in our total surplus due to some externality is this triangular region abc that is our dead weight loss thus we can conclude that price flow leads to dead weight loss now we'll take another example of how does price ceiling leads to dead weight loss now again we can see in our left hand side panel uh, showing our consumer and producer surplus without any externality that is our total surplus without any externality now we'll consider the case of price ceiling again price ceiling is the maximum price that can be charged by a producer and the maximum price that the consumer would have to pay for the product now again if again a price ceiling is exactly at price p not then it will not at any case affect our equilibrium because our equilibrium again will be at price p not and quantity q not that is at a again if our price ceiling is above the level p not then it will again not affect our consumer and producer surplus because again since the price can be less than our uh, less than our let's suppose p3 level so there will again be no dead weight loss as the intersection of demand and supply curve at equilibrium a can easily be reached but the case where our price is less than p not in this case we cannot reach our equilibrium level at a so let's consider this case that does this case leads to dead weight loss let us assume that this be a p4 at p4 we can see this is a price that is less than p not that is where there is no externality in this case we can easily figure out that the quant uh, that uh, p4 intersects our supply curve at quantity q1 on the other hand p4 intersects our demand curve at quantity q2 or q2 here our demand is greater than supply this is the case of excess demand but since the producer will not supply more and the price cannot be increased because p4 is the maximum price therefore our equilibrium will be reached exactly at price p4 so in this case let's see what will be our consumer surplus what will be our producer surplus we know since the price is p4 our quantity will become q1 because that will be the maximum quantity that our supplier would supply to us so in this case our consumer surplus will be area below the uh, demand curve and above our price line therefore we can easily make out that this trapezium is our consumer surplus that is the region b p1 p4 c now our producer surplus is the area above our supply curve and below our price line that is this triangle of area p4 c and p2 is our area of producer surplus now we know that our total surplus is equal to producer surplus plus consumer surplus so what is this region this is this entire trapezium is our total surplus that is area p1 b c p2 is our total surplus now comparing the two total surplus that is the area triangle p1 p2 p1 uh, area p p1 p2 and another another total surplus that is area p1 b c p2 we can easily make out that there is a loss in some total surplus and that is by this amount of triangle abc therefore this region we can say is our loss in the total surplus that is this region is our dead weight loss 
Therefore, we can say that triangle ABCs are deadweight loss and thus price ceiling leads to deadweight loss. Therefore, we can say both price ceiling and price fall leads to deadweight loss. I hope you liked this video. Thank you.